welcome back to lesson two. We are going to look at distribution functions of random variables. We should not confuse this to probability distribution functions. These are derivative of the probability distribution functions that can help us in carrying out some of those calculations we were doing with PDFs. So specifically we talk here, we, we talk about cumulative distribution functions. So for any random variable x, we define a CDF, a cumulative distribution function, uh, with a capital F. In most cases, small f will be used for PDF, probability distribution function, and capital F will be used for the cumulative distribution function. So we can define for both discrete and continuous cases. So if you have the PDF, you can transform it into a CDF by simply summing up over all values of x of the PMF you are having for discrete case. If you have continuous case, you just integrate the PDF to get the CDF. But you have to note that we are summing from the smallest value of x, that is f, uh, x is negative infinity, to, the, to, to some point x. Because cumulative means is a stepwise function increasing from the smallest value of x, such that at the highest point of x, you are going to get 1. That is why we are calling it a cumulative distribution function. It cumulatively sums the probabilities from the PDF. Now, it is, T is introduced to facilitate the summation or the integration for the summation when you have discrete and the integration when you have continuous. Some properties of the CDF here we should note is that limit uh, as x tends to a very big value of the CDF is 1. That's why I said it is cumulative. So then limit of as we go to the smallest value of x, again that is 0. So actually the CDF is in the interval 0, 1 but increasing an increasing function of x. As x increases from the smallest value, it increases but does not exceed 1. Now again, that statement is uh, reiterated here. f of x is non-decreasing function. It has to increase as x increases. f of x is also right continuous of x, or rather limit as t tends to x of f of t is actually x, if you have t being an observation. We should remember this. If the CDF of x, uh, f of x and the PDF is this, then, the, then differentiate the CDF to get the PDF. We were integrating. So you differentiate the CDF to get the PDF is the reverse. And integrate the PDF to get the CDF. The small, cap, the small f of x is abbreviating the PDF. The capital is representing the CDF. So we are just repeating this, that... If we, integrating the, we, we integrated the PDF to get the CDF, then differentiate the CDF to get the PDF. A very important theorem in probability in statistics is that we, we, there was a point we were having, uh, if you want the probability that X lies in the interval AB when we were introducing distribution function, probability distribution function, and we said if x is continuous, we integrate from a to b of f of x dx. But if you manage to get the CDF of x, then probability x lies between a and b can simply be obtained by replacing the upper limit in the CDF minus replacing the lower limit in the CDF. So once you're able to get the CDF of a random variable, then you don't have to do this to get this result because this gives you the same thing, just replacing the upper limit of, uh, of, of the probability interval you're looking for minus the lower limit from the CDF. And let's look at examples. We have the first example here. Let x be a discrete random variable with PMF given this way. You're told to determine the CDF of x and compute probability x is less than 3. Now, we say said since this is a discrete case, we sum from the smallest value of x. And in this case, the smallest value of x is 1. So we are going to sum from 1 up to some value 
x of the PMF we are having. And it appears very clearly here that the, our PMF is 1 over 21 plus x. Then we sum from the smallest value, which is 1 up to x. And by doing that, we notice that we are having the first value is 1. So if I put x is 1, because we are summing from 1, all these values. If I put 1, I get 2. If I put 2, I get 3, and so on, up to a point where I will have x plus 1. That is the last point here. So this can be expressed differently by if I factor out x over 2. In that case, I'll, have to, I'll need a 2 here, and then I'll need a 6 here. Because I want such that if I multiply these by these, I get whatever is here. So I need a 4, a 6, an 8, and so on, up to an x minus 1. So that if I multiply with it here, I get back to what I was having here. That can also be written as x plus, uh, x into brackets, x plus 3 over 40, if we open 3, if you open the brackets here. And now the CDF can be expressed as 0 for values of x less than 1. And you can see that x is defined from 1. So for any value of x that is less than that, the CDF is actually 0. It doesn't go below 0. Then it takes the expression x, x plus 3 over 40 for x values lying between 1 and 5. And for any value greater than 5, it's 1 because we've said the, the CDF increases from 0 to 1 cumulatively. So the probability that x is greater than 3 is, means that we are looking at the probability that x is 3, 4, or 5, and that can be obtained by getting the probability 1 minus the probability that x is less than 3. Because it's cumulative, we can do the reverse. An expression to that is we are having... 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, we are looking for the probability that x is greater than 3. I take, or rather, we are looking for the probability that x is less than 3. But we are saying that the CDF, f of x capital, is cumulative. So what it is doing, if I get the probability of x being up to here, then it will give me the probability where I'm summing this, this, and this. So if I want to get this, an alternative of probability x is less than 3 is 1 minus probability that x is less than or equal to 3. So, so that I can be able to get this by just replacing 3 as x in the CDF. So that replacement takes us back here because we've seen that this is the CDF. So if I put 3 here, I'll have 3, and then 3 plus 3 is 3 times 6. So 1 minus that then gives me 11 out of 20. Example 2, we have we've been given, and actually we noticed that this is the same as the one we had in PMF because we've seen this relationship. Uh, X lies between A and B is F of B minus F of A. We would want to see whether this would hold for the same example we've ha we had done before. So I'm given F of X is equals to uh, a half of x for x in the interval 2, 0, 0, otherwise. So we say that if I want to get the CDF of x, then I integrate from the smallest value of x, which is 0, up to some point. Of the CDF of the PDF, which is a half of x, with respect to x. So this will be a quarter of x squared. Put limit zero to x, so it becomes a quarter x squared. And therefore, the CDF can be expressed as zero when x is less than 
zero. Then a quarter x squared when x is in the interval zero two and one when x is greater than two. So this is the CDF, and we are we are looking for the probability that x is greater than 2 over 3. So simply, this implies f of 2 over 3, of which this will be a quarter 2 over 3 squared, which will be a quarter times 4 over 9, which is 1 over 9. And again, we have this example here, so the, the, like the one we had previously we can be able to integrate this with respect to x and obtain these corresponding probabilities and some set of exercises for practice purposes. Now we have derived random variables. Now derived random variables at times you may have an expression, a PDF say, PDF, PDF of X, but then you have another random variable, say Y, which is expressed in terms of X, say X plus four, two X plus four. But then you're required to find the distribution of the new random variable, but you don't have its distribution. What you know is the distribution of the original random variable X. So if you can be able to define the distribution of the new random variable y, then that is what we call derived random variable because you're getting the random variable of another new random variable using a form, a one that you already know. So that means that if you can be able to express the PDF of a new random variable using the one that you have, then the new random variable is a derived random variable. You, you can have expression 2x plus 3. All these expressions, it's possible to get their, their distribution given the distribution of x. For a one-to-one -one relationship between x and y, e.g. this, f of x and g of y yields exactly the same probabilities. Only the random variable and the set of values it can assume changes. So if you have a one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-one, -one, you see th 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 there is a linear relationship between x and y in this expression, and that is what why we are, we are calling it a one-to-one -one relationship, because for you to get y, you just need to place values of x here. So we, we look at an example. You're given the PMF of a random variable x f of x is given by x over 6 for values of x 1, 2, and 3 and 0 elsewhere. So then you are expected to get the transformation. Y is equals to X squared. So first we need to check the transformations that are coming in due to those changes that are made in the random variable there. So if we are to transform Y into X squared, then we are going to have the first, when x is 1, then y squared, rather x squared, which is y, is 1 squared, which is 1. And we only have one such case here. Then when x is 2, we have y is equals to 2 squared, which is 4. Only one case there will have that property. Then when x is 3, we'll have y is equals to 3 squared, which is 9. So we can come up with this table, y values, and then probability that y is equals to y. The, val the possible values of y are 1, 
4 and 9. And therefore, the distribution of x will be such that when 1, the probability is 1 over 6 because the replacement is directly from here. So 1 over 6. Then when x is 2, it's only that case where we have 2 over 6, which is actually a third. And then we have 3 out of 6, which is actually a half. So these are the three cases of the distribution of y. And again, we can also write it in form of uh, an equation. We can have y all over 6 for values of y is equals to 1, 2, 3. This is where we are saying that the distribution of the new random variable y is the same. Only that the values of y changes. But the distribution should remain the same. We will observe a different case where the random variable y will have a different expression. Now, given the PMF, another example, given the PMF of a random variable x as f of x is equal to that, we may want to derive that and see what happens. We are given f of x is equal to x plus 1 all over 15. And then x is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. 0 otherwise. So we are told to get the PMF of y is equals to x minus 2 squared. This is an interesting form of an equation because now when x is 0, then y becomes 0 minus 2 squared, which is actually 4. But we still have another expression that can give us the same result. When x is 4, what happens? y is 4 minus 2 squared, which is again 4. So the corresponding probability to these two will be when x is 0, which is 0, with probability 0. We're just replacing values of x to get the corresponding probability. We have 0 for the first case, and when x is 4, we've seen that. So that will be 5 over 15, which is actually a third. So those two cases, they give us, which is 5 over 15. When x is 0, is 1 over 15, sorry. So in these two cases, we have when x is 0, we have 0 plus 1, all over 15, which is 1 over 15. And when x is 4, which is 4 plus 1, all over 15 which is 5 over 15. So we have 6 over 15 or 2 over 3. Now, let's look at when x is 1. When x is 1, we have y being equals to 1 minus 2 squared, which is actually 1. Then, when x is 3, we have 3 minus 2 squared, which is actually 1. So in these two cases, we have when x is 1, we'll have 1 plus 1 over 15, plus when x is 3, is 3 plus 1 all over 15, which will be 2 over 15 plus... 4 over 15, which is again 6 over 15, or by 3, 2, by 3, 5, which is 2 out of 5. Then, in the last case, we have when x is 2, because we had one, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. When x is 2, we simply have y is equals to 
x minus 2 squared, which is actually 0 squared. And this is only one case. So that is when x is 2, of, of which we are going to have the corresponding probability is 2 plus 1 over 15, which is actually 3 over 15, which is 1 over 5. And therefore, we can come up with a table with values of x and the corresponding probabilities. Now, the possible values of x we've seen are either 0, 1, or 4. And the corresponding probabilities are as we have calculated them. So the f when 0, that is 1 over 5. When the value of x is 1, the, when the value of y is 1, we have 2 out of 5. And when the value of x is 4, we had 2 out of 3. So this is the, the PMF that we had been asked to evaluate. Now given, we look at an example. Given the PMF of a random variable is f of x is equals to x plus 1 all over 15, and x is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 0 otherwise. We want to get the distribution of x minus 2 squared. So we look at possible transformations given different values of x. So when x is 0, then we have y is equals to 0 minus 2 squared, which is actually 4. But it is also possible to get this result using a different value of x. So when x is 4, we have y is equals to 4 minus 2 squared, which is again 4. So that means when we go to the distribution of y, this 2 will contribute to the same when we want y to be 4. So when x is 0, if we put 0 here, we get 1 over 15, 0 plus 1 over 15. And when x is 4, it becomes 4 plus 1 over 15 which means we have 1 over 15 plus 5 over 15, which is 6 out of 15 by 3, 2, by 3, 5. So the corresponding probability for those two cases is 2 over 5. When x is 2, then we have y is equals to 2 minus 2 squared, which is 0. And we can only have one such case when x, y is, when, when y becomes zero. And in that case, it will be two plus one divided by 15, which is three out of 15 or one over five. Now let's look at when x is one. When x is one, we have y is equals to one minus two squared is actually 1 squared, which is 1. But we still can get a similar result using a different value of x. When x is 3, then we have y is equals to 3 minus 2 squared, which is actually 1 squared, which is 1. So this 2 will contribute to the same. So when x is 1, we have 1 plus 1 all over 15 plus when x is 3, we have 3 plus 1 all over 15. This becomes 2 out of 15 plus 4 out of 15, which is actually 6 over 15, which is again 2 out of 5. So we can come up with a table describing the values of y and their corresponding probabilities. So we have three values of y. We have 0, 1, and 4 as we've been deriving them. So probability when when y is 0, we've seen that it's becoming 1 out of 5. When x is 1, we've seen, when y is 1, we've seen that becomes 2 out of 5. And when y is 4, again, we got 2 out of 5. And clearly, we can test that this is a PMF by summing these probabilities and getting 5 out of 5, which is 1. Hence, it's a PMF. The exercises 
for practice purposes. And then we have the change of variable technique. Now, the change of variable technique, sometimes you may have to change the expression of y given a certain expression of x. So, let x be a, a, a random variable with a continuous random variable with a PDF of fx and let y be a function of x. So you can change the variable or you by transforming x, including transforming the interv interval for over which x is operating by using the expression g of y is equals to f of x, then the absolute value of the derivative of x with respect to y. You notice this is the derivative of x with respect to y. But initially, you're given a function of f of x. So you need to transform the, the f of x you have in before you differentiate it. So if you have a CDF, capital F of x, of a random, x, x, of a random variable x, then a random variable y is equal to has a uniform distribution. This is very important. It has a uniform distribution in, the, in an interval, 0, 1. We look at an, an example. You're given that a random variable x has f of x is equals to 5x raised to power 4, 0x, x is in the interval 0, 1, then 0 otherwise. We want to find the distribution, the PDF of y is equals to x cubed. So the solution to this First, we know that the PDF of y, g of y, will be given by f of y, the absolute value of the derivative of x with respect to y. So this transformation here, to do it, first we need to make y the subject of the formula here. So uh, rather x the subject of the formula. So we are going to have, if y is equals to x cubed, then x is y raised to power that, or simply the, the cube root of y gives you x. Now, since we have an expression of x with respect to y, then we can get the derivative of x with respect to y to satisfy this. Then, that means we are going to have, drop this, becomes a third, then we minus one, so we have y negative 2 over 3. So we now go back to the expression g of y is equals to f of y, then the absolute value of this dx over dy. So then we are going to have g of y is equals to, we replace y in the equation. So we are going to have y raised to power that cubed, then the absolute value of a third x, or sorry, y raised to power 2 over 3. So that, this now becomes, this cancels with this, we have y, then this is multiplied by a third, y to third. So this is a third, this and this becomes y, one plus two third. So this is a third, y raised to power five over three. And therefore g of y is equals to a third, y five over three, plus, uh, so for, rather for y in the interval 0, 1, and 0 otherwise. We look at another example there, example 8. So if you have the PDF of x, f of x, is equals to 24 x squared for x in the interval 0 a half, 
then you two to get the PDF of y is it zero elsewhere? You are to get the PDF of y is equals to eight x cubed. So that means first we need to carry out the transformation. We need to carry out the transformation of y of getting the expression of x with respect to y. So this will mean that we have y is equals to 1 over 8. Sorry, we are going to have x cubed is equals to 1 over 8y. Then we get the cube root of both sides of the equation. That we have x is equals to the cube root of 8 multiplied by the cube root of y. Cube root of 8 is 2, of 1 over 8 is 2. So we are going to have a half, then y raised to power that. Cube root of y can also be written as y raised to power a third. Then from there, we go back to the expression of g of y, which we've said is f of, x, f of y dx over dy. So in this case, we need to get dx over dy. And we've seen that x is a half of y raised to power that. And therefore, dy over dx over dy will be equals to, you drop this here, you get 1 over 6. Then you have y, this one minus 1, so that you have negative 2 over 3. Then we have now our gy will be equals to f of y. We've gotten uh, 1 out of 2, y raised to power third. Then we have the absolute value of 1 over 6, y negative 2 over 3. So this is sorry, cubed because of the expression we had. So this becomes 1 over 8y, then multiplied by 1 over 6, y raised to power negative 2 over 3. So this is 1 over 48, then y raised to power that. So g of y can be written as that, then for y in the interval 0, 1, 0, otherwise. We have a set of exercises for you. That is the end of lesson two. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.